Okay, welcome to the next lesson of uh, Unit 3, Chapter 4. This is about uh, how we can prove triangles congruent, and really what congruent triangles sort of are in the first place. Okay, so we've talked about congruent before in terms of segments and angles and that kind of thing. Triangles uh, are just made up of segments and angles, so um, it's kind of more of the same, but there's more going on in a triangle. So uh, if we're going to say this triangle is congruent to that triangle, we're saying everything about this triangle is congruent to everything about this triangle. In other words, all the segments are congruent. Um, you know, this segment's congruent to this segment, and this segment's congruent to this segment. And all of the angles are congruent. So we're saying really that there's six things going on that are all congruent. We say two triangles are congruent. In this example, it says, given that triangle ABC is congruent to DFE, um, that's very specific. By saying, you know, we calling, we're calling this triangle ABC and calling this triangle DFE, we're being very prescriptive about how we said that. Remember when I said last class that, you know, we could call this triangle anything we want. We could call it ABC, we could call it BCA, we could call it CAB. Uh, that's true, but when, as soon as I start putting it together with another triangle, saying ABC is congruent to DFE, I'm saying in which order or sort of in which matchup these points are happening and these segments and these angles. So if I say ABC is congruent to DFE, that means that I, I could be sure the thing in the first position here, this A, goes with this first position letter in this other triangle. So whatever A is doing here, the one that it's congruent to on this side, the angle, the segments that connect to it, is D on this one. And likewise, B goes with F and C goes with E. So that's something you need to get used to. There's kind of this pairing up of first letter, second letter, third letter on all of those. Uh, so if I say, well, what, what, just by knowing this, I don't even need to look at the picture actually to fill these out. Uh, if, a, B, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DFE, I know that angle A is congruent to angle D. And I know that angle B is congruent to angle F. And I know that angle C is congruent to angle E. Sorry, I don't have my same writing implement today, so I'm mousing these in. Uh, likewise, AB, segment AB, it connects the first letter and the second letter, so that has to be congruent to segment D. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> Sorry. DF. And segment BC is congruent to segment, well, that's the second letter, third letter, second letter, third letter. Uh, be segment FE. And CA, that's the first letter and the last letter. Actually, that's opposite, isn't it? C goes with E, and A goes with D. So see how those are matched up. Okay. Uh, that's referred to as corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which we're going to abbreviate CPCTC. This is a very popular rule in proofs, kind of like transitive. Uh, very popular. CPCTC means this is how I'm sure of all this stuff. When I was drawing these connections here, like I know the first letter goes with the second letter, uh, because I can sort of trust the order here, if I need to claim that as a reason to prove, well, how do you know angle A is congruent to angle B? That's called, well, because these are corresponding parts. I know it's a little confusing because we're using the word corresponding, and we've talked about the word corresponding before when we were talking about parallels. You know, corresponding, we saw something like this, and we had corresponding angles here and here. Um, yeah, those are corresponding. Well, because they're in the kind of the same position in two, in two triangles or two angles. Sorry, two angles on the the parallel lines of the transversal. Same thing here. Angle A and angle D, you can think of as corresponding because they kind of do the same job in the two triangles. Here, they happen to look like they're facing the same direction, and they sort of are. If this triangle was spun around, I would still say they're corresponding because of the way this is written. So the correspondence here doesn't have to do so much with the direction they're pointing like it did with parallel lines. It has to do with um, the one in one triangle that goes with the other one in the other triangle. And that you can tell by the way it's written. Again, that rule is called CPCTC. You'll hear me say that a lot. Let's get to another polygon so that these are congruent. All right, I'm going to pause and cheat here for a second. All right, if I'm supposed to draw a congruent one, well, drawing it's not the hard part. Drawing it, you could probably draw one so that it looks pretty close. And really, if it's not perfect, uh, that's fine, because all we're going to do, of course, is just say that it's congruent. But I have to I have to line it up. Sorry, this might be confusing later. Uh, I might have to, I might want to line it up 
so that this is true. So remember, we want to be able to trust this statement. When you write a congruent statement, you're kind of locked into the way things go. So if I have a one that looks just like this and I want it to kind of be facing the same direction and every, everything, I can't just haphazardly lab label these, oh, that's G, that's H, that's a, I gotta label it just like I label this. Oh, and by the way, I don't think we've ever talked about this before. Uh, notice how this is called A, B, C, D, E. When you label polygons that have lots of sides, like more than three sides, you have to label them in a, uh, an order that goes around the figure. Like this one's called A, B, C, D, E. I can't call this A, C, E, B, D. Like I can't like make a star pattern as I go around this pentagon. I have to go one way or the other. I could start at any point, like I could start at D, and I could go either direction, but I have to label points consecutively. So I could I could have called this D, C, B, A, E. I could have called this A, B, C, D, E. Uh, but I, anyway, I, call, I decided to call this one A, B, C, D. Okay, so once we have the thing labeled, we have to label this one so that this works out. So just like before, A has to go where you know has to go with G. So wherever A was, I need G, and I've got these all ready to go on the other side. G. Oh no, that's not cool. Let me fix that. Well, it's not cooperating, but you're gonna get the idea. All right. So point A has to go with point G, or in other words, I guess when I put G in, it has to go right with the one I want to be A, the same as A. So it appears here that this angle is congruent to this one, so I gotta label that one G. Likewise, B has to go with H. So I gotta put H here, yeah, it's gonna be invisible if I don't put it in the right place, and so on. So F has to go here, D has to go, how about there? And E has to go here. Okay. All right, so if we're told that RSV is congruent to TVS, and notice some of these letters are the same. I got an S here, I got a V here, I got a, uh, that can happen. That kind of implies something kind of tricky. Use a diagram to find X and Y. All right. So RSV, RSV is this one over here, is going to be TVS, this one over here. But look how, you know, angle R in one or point R, corner R in this triangle corresponds to corner T over here. S in the, in the left triangle is the same as or corresponds with or is, you know, everything congruent about it. It goes with V in the other triangle. So we see a right angle here at S, that, that's in this triangle. That means that I know in the other triangle over here, there must be a right angle here at V also. I can imply that from, or is it infer? I can infer that from this little statement right here. And this 78 degree angle here is at V in this triangle. I know that there's a 78 degree angle, triangle, uh, degree angle here in this triangle because V in that triangle goes with S in the other triangle. All right, but that's not really what we're about. Um, we're trying to find x and y. Oh yeah, we could use that for x and y. If that's 78, I just said this a second ago. Oh, I gotta change my pen up a bit here. Then I know this is 78 because of what I just said. I know this is a right angle. <laughs> Sorry about my handwriting. So now look at this x. I can tackle that x now. Like this, if there's a triangle here, 78x and the 90, I can figure out what x is pretty quick. Okay, as for the uh, sides here, I have rs over here. Okay, rs is the first two letters. That goes with tv in the other triangle. Oh, tv is 24. tv is the one that equals 2y minus 1. If I said 2y minus 1 equals 24.5, I would get this wrong. Uh, the rs, the, the, the first two letters here, that has to go with, that's the only one where I can find y. That has to go with this one. Look carefully there. So RS and O, it's 24. So I can do it that way. And bam, I've done that right here. Uh, I know that it's going to have to turn out to be a decimal, which can happen. Don't be scared of decimals. All right. Uh, here's a theorem about triangles. This kind of falls right out of the fact that you know all triangles have to add up to 180. So this shouldn't be terribly surprising. Uh, if I'm trying to compare two triangles, and I know in um, this triangle, angle C is congruent to angle K over here, and angle B over here is congruent to angle J over here. Well, think about how there's only 180 in the whole triangle, and there's only 180 in the whole triangle. If it's the same this much, then the leftovers have to be the same also. Uh, if you make up number for C, which would be the same as K for a degree size, if you made up a number for B, uh, which would be the same as J, you could subtract those from 180, and whatever you'd be left with would be the same in both triangles. So whenever you've got two angles congruent, you automatically get the third for free. Uh, so guess what? Let's do a little proofy thing. Let me copy the givens first. All right, so remember there were points for this on the test, uh, just copying in that stuff you needed there. Uh, and we can go ahead and mark stuff. Oh, look, it's already marked. All right, so you know that theorem we just learned is about the third angle in the triangle being congruent, and we are told that one angle is congruent. We're asked about a different one. There's only one left. It'd be nice to know this. Uh, if we knew that this was congruent to this, well then guess what, we have enough information, but I think you know already why that's true. 
don't spend too much time thinking about it. Why should CED be congruent to BEA? I'll tell you right now, those are vertical angles. You would have known that. Uh, don't forget about those kind of things. Vertical angles, they're not going away. We know um, we can use that stuff. Stuff about parallel, that's coming back too. Um, so if these two angles in one triangle are congruent to these two angles in another triangle, then I know from this thing I just learned that the third angles are going to be congruent also. So that's all I need to be able to say, well, this is congruent then by the third angles theorem. Okay, a couple other, oh yeah, these are not to be taken lightly. These are the first two in our list of why can we prove entire triangles are congruent. So far I've been, uh, other than that last problem, we've just been talking about, well, what does it mean if triangles are congruent? It means we have a bunch of stuff that we know for sure uh, has to follow from that, including all three sides will be congruent and all three angles are congruent. This is now, we're trying to, we're trying to answer the question, well, how can you try to prove that triangles are congruent? It would be really nice if we didn't have to, prove and establish and be sure that all six things were congruent in order just to say the triangles are congruent. So it turns out, and we'll study some of this with Sketchpad in class because it's, it's kind of hard to believe that this is such a big shortcut on some of these. Um, but it happens to work. And it doesn't work for all figures, but it does work for triangles, so that's also something to remember. Anyway, um, the first one is this one. If three sides, so they call this side, 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 because it's about you got to make sure you're talking about all three sides. Notice there's the one tick ang uh, sides here, the two tick sides, and the three tick sides. If you knew that all three lengths in one triangle were congruent to all three lengths in another triangle, like say you knew this was five, and this was six, and this was seven, and you knew this was five, and this was six, and this was seven, there's a leap you can make here and say, well, and it, and it works with sides works with some other stuff too, but it definitely works with sides. Then I know in everything about this triangle, basically including those other three angles, is going to have to be congruent about this triangle. So if you prove triangles are congruent by, you know, figuring out what all the sides are, or figuring out all the sides will line up, all three sets of sides, like they listed here, then you can say the triangles are congruent, and again, be careful how you list it, so you make sure you capture this correctly in order, uh, by SSS. Here's another one that works, and this one is a little bit trickier to keep track of. I'll talk about that on the next uh, slide. It's, uh, it's after this on your paper. Um, this is called side angle side. So this was called side 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 here because we have a side here, a side here, and a side here. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and that's compared to, on the other triangle, the same stuff. So it's three sides you have to worry about. This one, we're, th we're thinking about a side here, an angle that's congruent in the other triangle, and a side here. So this labeling system, this naming system of side, 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 and side, angle, side, and there's more of them in this type of list, uh, has to do with what's the collection of stuff we know that's the same in both triangles. This is called side, angle, side, and not, not because this is our school acronym, or not because they're trying to avoid bad words. This is actually called side, angle, side, because the angle, if you look at this carefully, the angle is actually connecting these two sides. If I had, and we'll talk about this on the next page again, but uh, it has to go side, angle, side, kind of packed tightly together in the triangle. I couldn't have angle B and this side A and this side A C over here because the angle wouldn't be between the sides. So they called it, they call it the included angle. That's uh, on both triangles. That's very important that it's included because it has to be between the sides. So it's why they list it in this order. It's just conveniently also about our school. But um, Side angle side is, again, in that order. So if you know that stuff is congruent between two triangles, you can kind of, you get to make the leap and say, well, then I know the entire triangle is congruent. I know AC will be congruent to FD after that, and angle A and angle D, that's all that great stuff comes from that. So this is a, this is a different um, sort of three-part abbreviation to the six-part full congruence about triangles. Here's more about that, that included angle. Um, if we're going to talk about... Um, what an included angle is. Here, if we knew about side AB and side CB, if it was AB and CB in our, in our congruent statement that we were trying to make, B would be the angle that's included. B is the angle that's between those other two. Uh, and that's kind of important. Uh, the next question is, what is, what's the included angle if we were talking about these two sides, CA and BA? Well, I'll give you a hint. There's an A here and there's an A here. So it's going to be, guess what, angle A. If you look at the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the segments that are labeled here, CA is this one, BA is this one. Those two segments, well, they meet right here. So this would work if we were comparing this to another triangle. Okay, let's do that again for our last one. 
uh, B, C, and A, C. Well, guess what? Just looking at the way those are labeled, there's a C in both of them. So we'd be talking about angle C. And here's B, C, and here's A, C, and here's that angle. Okay, that's it for part one. I'll see you in part two.